honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the sportstuff.com. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Google Play Music, <laughs> Stitcher, and Double Twist. Welcome on board. Thank you for joining me once again today to talk Timberwolves basketball. Not a bad week for the Wolves. No Carl Anthony Towns, no problem. We got Gorgie. We got Gorgie. We don't want Carl back because we're actually playing defense. Yeah, Timberwolves 2-1 and one this past week. And of course, I'm kidding. Of course, we want Carl back because the offense, obviously, is not the same without him. I just, boy, boy, Carl, you know, you know what's funny? Because we always talked about it. You know, how many times have I talked about this on the show the last five years or so with Carl and Andrew Wiggins? They came into the draft as like a phenomenal defender, and I hopefully, hopefully they get their offense together. Maybe they'll be like a Garnett. It's like the defense is super good, and they're, you know, they'll get their 20 points or something. Yeah, it's like completely the opposite, at least most of the time. Though, uh, both of them can have rounded out games at times. Uh, Andrew Wiggins is considerably better, uh, defensively than he was in the past, so that's good. Obviously, it's a totally different vibe of late last couple of years. Uh, well, the last year for Wiggins mostly, and even Carl had some moments last year, some outstanding defense. Uh, obviously, both of them are more than capable of scoring the basketball. Carl, obviously, since he's been injured, 26.5 a game. He's Well, he's been stuck at that number, which is an unbelievable number. You know, not quite league MVP level, but it's, you know, it's, it's in the hunt, we'll say. In the hunt. Not in contention, but in the hunt. You know, when you're, like, out of the playoffs, but you're, yeah, close. That type of thing, which is the Wolves' case, I guess, as well. Andrew Wiggins, 24 points a game. Obviously, he finally came back from the worst flu ever, I guess. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know if NBA players milk injuries, milk sickness, or they're just more precautionary, or they're just not like they used to be. Like, they don't make them like they used to back in the day. You don't see... But, and also, it's not the NBA Finals or anything with you know, Michael Jordan's case and guys like that. Obviously, playing through major sickness and winning NBA championships, stuff like that. <laughs> Michael Jordan multiple times doing that, 92 and 97. So, let's get to the point here. Let's talk about the three games. We visit the Cleveland Cavaliers. I had a good feeling going into this game. Actually, I didn't. I did not have a good feeling going into this game because the Wolves rarely, or the Wolves stunk so bad at home against them, but I figured hopefully maybe with our road record we'll be a little better. And they were, and Gorgie Zeng was unbelievable. Kevin Garnett-like numbers. I mean, literally, Kevin Garnett numbers. The one stat here that I think is better than Garnett, usually, obviously, because not many people do this, four blocks. Uh, four blocks for Gorgie Zhang. What a beautiful game. He was four, four of five from downtown. Just that silky smooth shot. I mean, he's the he was the alpha wolf last week, and he's going to be in contention for it all the week again. What an awesome, awesome showing. Jared Culver just continuing to improve that three-point shot. Jared Culver's three-point shot's getting better. And better and better. Gorgie's just been lights out at times. And Napier continuing his extremely strong play. This was a fun game. Extremely fun game. We had 42 points in that second quarter. The third, Cavaliers went on an insane 31-4 run. What? I mean, that's f- freaking awful. Yeah, that's right. 34, excuse me, 31-4 to four run. I mean, really? Is that is that real? Is that for real? Yeah, what the hell? And led by Dante Exum? I mean, good guy, might? Okay, I don't mean it that way. Uh, wow, I mean, <laughs> bloody oath. Bloody oath, Dante Exum. My goodness. Uh, uh, a lot of people thought he was going to be a good player. Ended up being kind of like a weaker version of, uh, yeah, the guy in uh, San Antonio. I'll just leave that alone. But, you know, just you know, kind of a spark plug here and there. But this is much more of a spark plug. Uh, he led that drive. That uh, crazy run by Cleveland, which actually had them ahead for a little bit. The next thing you know, Wiggins nails a three, and the Wolves just kind of go on their run and wraps, uh, wrap the whole thing up. But, my goodness, it didn't come with without some frustration. I mean, what the hell? How, how do you give up that kind of run to this team? It's, uh, there's talented players, but I don't know. That's kind of lame. That was kind of lame. Uh, but... Good, good on you. Good on you, Dante. Yep, see, I'm going to go to back to my uh, my Australian friends, you know, Fitz Gerbato, Wayne Hunt, Stu Benson, and, and many others. Kalen Woods, guys like you out there. You know, good on you, mate, uh, when it comes to Dante Exum. What an amazing game. 11-13, uh, made all four of his threes, 28 points. 24 of them in the second half. That is just, uh, well, as they say, that, that was sick. 
it, it really was. Another thing that might be sick a little bit, too, is Kevin Porter Jr. Not sure what his status is. He had his knee buckle on him a little bit. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, that was a very unfortunate situation for Kevin Porter Jr. anyway. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with him. Kind of looking it up. So I guess it's four to six weeks. So luckily there, maybe a MCL type of thing, a sprain. So four to six weeks is none of that ACL nonsense. I didn't see a whole lot of movement. I mean, it buckled, but it didn't move that much. So it's to me, it looked like a, a, str- a sprain. Not a strain, but a sprain. Strain is like you miss maybe a couple games. Sprain is when you miss, uh, you know, like a month or so, possibly. Four to six weeks, kind of a typical, not good, but it is what it is type of injury. Uh, <clears throat> almost like a broken bone type of injury, you know, in terms of the time. But, um, yeah, because I, I, I hadn't even looked at it, so I just jumped on the fly here for that one. Um, <laughs> I got so distracted with them, I'm keeping up with this team that's playing pretty well lately. It's a pretty good distraction when you're doing a Timberwolves podcast, not a Cleveland podcast, but uh, God bless Scott Kevin Porter Jr. Hopefully he can uh, yeah, have a speedy recovery and all that. He'll be back out there and, well, you know, helping the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, rebuild and move their team in the right direction. They got the pieces to, they got a few pieces there to get moving and a nice uh, buy low move with Dante Exum. Maybe that change of scenery will really help uh, Mr. Exum and he will be excellent, that type of thing. Uh, fun game, though. Fun back and forth game. Just a frustrating run. Made you think. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna give up a, a huge lead in Cleveland, Ohio. Are you kidding me? This is this is dumb. This is it's just dumb. Uh, we've been through it all year. Ugh. But uh, nice nice yeah nice, nice night for the bench. Keelan Martin continuing bringing some energy and some uh, in you know solid basketball. I like Keelan Martin. I think he deserves to be in the NBA for for a significant amount of time. I do. Uh, Absolutely, and Nas Reed, I think, will hang around in the NBA for a while, too. Some people were, uh, some of the classic, uh, I'll call it the classic generation, not because I have nothing against them at all, were kind of annoyed with the threes by Nas Reed. I agree, too, when it comes to, like, ten threes, but a, a few is okay, and I'm sure they would agree with me. Um, you know, the, the the veteran veteran basketball fans, and I'm a veteran fan, too, of course, but I mean, more veteran than me. I'm in... I'm 40, but I'm talking guys like 60-ish. Like, yeah, is he going to shoot like 19 threes again, Nas Reed? <laughs> and it's like, no, I agree, don't go into, I would say Nas Reed should keep it to about three or four a game and, unless he really becomes a spectacular three-point shooter because I don't think he's there yet. Culver, though, I mean, keep it up, two of four. Got to like that. Napier, I kept ripping on him and ragging on him, you know, like the last month or so. And he has really found a, a niche, and he is really uh, looking like a like a professional out there. And the assist to turnover ratio, hey, and I talked about that all last week. Uh, seven to one assist to turnover ratio for Shabazz Napier. That's outstanding. Uh, Napier, awesome. Uh, Napier got the Alpha Wolf last week. It was I think a uh, week before. That's when Gorky got the Alpha Wolf. And he's both of these guys could be in contention again. We'll just keep moving forward though. But Jared Culver, what a nice solid week for him. Four steals. What a nice night. In Cleveland, I enjoyed every second of Jared Culver's uh, game here. And he's going to continue to play well against the ultra-frustrating Memphis club. Oh, God. They're very talented, but come on, man. They're not that good yet. That was Jan the 5th, again, after the Minnesota Vikings defeated the New Orleans Saints. And we were jumping around yelling, you like that? And it was uh, a lot of fun. So check out Purple Mafia if you'd like to do that to listen to some uh, Minnesota Vikings versus New Orleans Saints conversation, and of course a preview of the San Francisco, or I like to call San Francisco, uh, 49ers coming up tomorrow at this point, tomorrow afternoon. Thank God the day's off. I thought I was going to end up having to work. Oof. That would have been bad. Uh, I'm covering a division round game, and I gotta watch replay of it. I gotta watch it on a replay? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Not a game like that. So, hallelujah, amen. I'm probably not gonna have to worry about that. Sweat it out anymore. Um, Memphis Grizzlies, though, uh, you know, Wayne Hunt of the Courtside Podcast, probably the best basketball podcast on the planet. In fact, not probably. It is. Uh, Check it out. Australia, again, Sydney's finest in terms of uh, Mr. Wayne Hunt and Stu Benson, and of course, Finrock, Vince Germano, a name you hear every show as well, from Melbourne, Australia. Love those guys. Great trio of basketball knowledge on the Courtside Podcast, on all the same publications like Apple and all that, Apple, Google, Podcasts, of course, uh, Podbean is the other one, Podomatic, I believe, yeah, Podbean. So we'll keep moving. Jared Culver won a night, 3 of 5 from downtown. Doesn't get better than that. It just sucked that we lost this one. 
nice start to the game. We were actually ahead a little bit, but it's like, yeah, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Uh, we were winning well into this game, back and forth, kind of a back and forth effort, winning well into the game, and then Memphis just pulled away. John Morant, he's got some skills, I'm telling you. He's got some ball handling skills that uh, are going to make him a star in this league for quite a while. I've uh, I've been a fan, and wow, I mean, a good lord, behind the back, made Jared Culver look silly. And Jared Culver looked awesome out there against John Morant, though. I mean, give him credit, right? Can we give him credit? 8 of 11 from downtown. He can be aggressive to the basket. And again, uh, 8 of 11 from downtown. 8 of 11 overall. Only 11 attempts, 24 points. I mean, how many times do I have to keep talking about the points to field goal attempts ratio, the Palladino-Joey ratio or whatever, with the uh, field goal attempts to points ratio? Jared Culver, 24-11. I mean, you cannot complain about that. But Wiggins, there it is. Wiggins is always the one that's got the got the negative, you know, got the disappointing ratio here. 15 points, 13 field goal attempts. He wasn't that bad in the game. A little sloppy, though. He was definitely sloppy. The energy wasn't that great. It wasn't his worst game. He didn't get to the free throw line, which is a little irritating. Uh, Jared Culver was aggressive the entire night. Even got to the, you know, well, attempted seven free throws, and he missed two of them. Very strong overall night, and Naz Reed continuing to provide some energy off the bench. Love what he brings, and Jeff Teague, a nice, solid performance, 18 points off the bench as well, hitting half of his shots, including half his threes. Awesome. Uh, Napier, big, 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 big relapse in this game. Not a good night for him, necessarily, but uh, it was a fun game, just the finish wasn't good. Like, you know, and even Gorgi did not have that hot of a game, got a little trigger happy, and I keep complaining about this because it's, it's, a, it's a valid complaint. Whenever a guy's nailing his shots, it's like, okay, he shoots like three or four of them, uh, three-pointers. But whenever he's missing, we get into the six, seven, eight attempt range. Like, you know, like Wiggins, Wiggins was adequate. Like three of eight, that's not good, but it's not terrible. Gorgi, one of six. It's just like, ah, you know, and Katie Bay's job, forcing up threes. But I don't know, it is what it is. Oh, three. Not a whole lot of, not a whole lot of scoring from the bench. From guys like Kata, Kata Bay, Job, Gorgi, and Keelan Martin. None of those had a good game. Vunla was solid in the time he was out there, because obviously he's not an outside uh, shooter. Trevon Graham it was a DNP, unfortunately, so, well, I guess that's why we lost, right? Trevon Graham isn't in the lineup at all, but I don't know. His skills are limited. He's just got that uh, defensive energy, and he's aggressive and very, very strong, that type of thing, but, you know, you had a good effort from Culver and Teague. Culver and Teague were, were uh, particularly very good in the game, and as was uh, Robert Covington. It was very sharp in this game, but those guys just, they needed more help from Wiggins, Napier, you know, something like that. They needed more help from guys like that. And, and Gorgie, you know, Gorgie had probably his weakest game in I don't know how long. I mean, we're talking forever. Uh, Culver was a plus eight in the game. I mean, give give him some credit. He was just awesome the entire night. Give the guy credit. He was, uh, he had a hell of a game. I mean, he had a hell of a game, did uh, Jared Culver. So, credit where it's due. I want to analyze some of this a little bit. Some mild analyzing here. I mean, Jared Culver of late, he's just been stepping up. Uh, he's been he's been solid. I want to look at his splits a bit. Obviously, he is, uh, you know, his three-point shot has improved. Overall for the season, he's still one of four, 25%, basically. But so far in January, you know, he, well, it's still, still not there because he had some crappy games. So that's the frustrating part. I was expecting it to be a little higher, 26%. But the last few games, he'd been very strong. Generally speaking, that's the good part. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed when I see that. Like, what the hell? I thought it was a little high. I got to be a little higher than that. But uh, uh, what do you do? What do you do? Um, still very solid play of late. He's been picking it up. Uh, he is averaging 14 points a game in January because now there's a little bit of a sample size. We're, you know, a third into the month. So, I mean, you got to give him some credit. He didn't really take off against Portland, but it wasn't that bad of a game. A um, couple good games against... Uh, you know, Memphis and Cleveland. And I, you, you can't expect them to get too dynamic and, out, and outstanding on three-point range when December the 30th was only like the second time of his entire career he had more than one three-pointer uh, in a game. So it, it's just kind of is what it is. So it kind of is what it is when it comes to Jared Culver. It was the first time he made three, actually, ever in his career. So he's still coming around, obviously, but you're seeing more and more signs. And what I like is he's not scared. He'll challenge big name guys. He'll pull, rip the ball away from uh, from a guy like uh, Luka Doncic, and of course he'll dunk on a Robin Lopez, who's known to be a pretty solid defensive player, obviously. 
he's a better defender than his brother Brooke. I mean, Brooke is more of an offensive-minded guy. So, I mean, come on now. I mean, that's that's not bad. I obviously got very excited and maybe a little too excited and got a technical, but nothing that bad. Uh, frustrating finish against Memphis. Fun game that didn't end fun, unfortunately, because it just never does. And we will hear from Wayne Hunt about that one on the Facebook page in the Fan Interaction segment. Portland coming to Minnesota. Again, they'd been playing a lot of road games coming into this one, so I was hopeful. I was hopeful, and I was hoping Wiggins would step up, and he did. Wiggins was outstanding in this game, uh, playing point forward, basically, off and on throughout the night. He was uh, bringing the ball up the court very, very frequently. <clears throat> and, of course, Napier, again, uh, you know, kind of in and out. Not a bad game, not a good game. Culver, not the greatest game, but certainly not the worst game. Sloppy, definitely, yeah. Four turnovers, only one assist. So definitely not good. Uh, Akogi, nice hustle throughout the night. Made some nice defensive plays coming up from behind the back. Like we saw in his college highlights, one of those LeBron James type of blocks where you come, you know, you just come running up from behind someone and block the shot. That was awesome. A couple of blocks for Akogi in the game. Gotta love what he was able to accomplish. Gorgi, another double-double night. Very, very, very efficient. Big three down the stretch when Portland was making their runs here and there. But Minnesota, generally speaking, just torched the Portland Trailblazers, starting with that second quarter. Portland definitely showing that they're tired and frustrated and kind of out of it. In the midpoint of the game, the Wolves scored 73 points in the second and third quarter. So, I mean, it's like, <laughs> it kind of was what it was. And in the fourth quarter, it was just kind of garbage time. And Minnesota ends up winning by 14. God, I love that. Uh, Carmelo Anthony had a big night recently, but not so much against the Timberwolves. Did not have a big game. Now you just see uh, Gary Trent Jr. getting some burn finally, as he has been, you know, invisible virtually invisible for the uh, Portland Trail Blazers, uh, and, uh, you know, in the uh, early days of his career, but uh, big night for him, 24 minutes, that's the biggest night in quite a while, 13 points, 3 of 6 from downtown, and that's what kind of, that's what kind of game he can bring, uh, gosh, I think he only scored 40 whole points last season, 40 points for the entire year last year, that's how inactive uh, Gary Trent was for the Portland Trail Blazers. Of course, probably trying to develop in their minor league affiliate a little bit. But, uh, man, <laughs> nice to see him, you know, getting some burn, getting some playing time. And, of course, with guys being tired and guys not playing so hot. And, of course, the fact they were getting their butts kicked as well later on. Uh, Gary Trent continued to uh, play and continued to get some numbers. So, good for him. Nice to see Anthony Tolliver with uh, yet another homecoming after being with the Wolves twice now. Uh, we'll see what Anthony, Anthony Simons can do. He's been getting a few minutes here and there. He's, he's got some game, he's got some promise, but yeah, he was one of those weird dark horses coming into the draft a year, uh, la, uh, a year ago. Not June 2019, but June 2018. He was one of those weird dark horses that might go in the teens in the draft and wound up with Portland at the end of the day, and we'll see what happens there. Hassan Whiteside certainly didn't have the amazing game that he did last time around where he just tore us apart in Portland. That was an extremely frustrating day when the Wolves were in it the whole way. Wiggins played well, as did other people, but Hassan Whiteside just tore us to pieces. It was so frustrating, and Dave Miller got his usual, you know, 30-something points, and McCollum was red hot like he always is, and he was pretty good in this game, too, but limited action, personal foul trouble, all that good stuff. Foul trouble might sound a little better. Sorry. Uh, Lillard did not have his best night. Again, just, you know, tired, struggled out there. And Wiggins, you know, he just kind of, he played that little LeBron James, that LeBron James point forward role, and he, he did a good job of it. Covington was solid. Again, Gorgie got another double-double. Culver, you know, he, he's getting more and more comfortable in his NBA clothes, we'll call it. NBA clothes, NBA pants, whatever you want to call it. Uh, not the best night for him, but not the worst. Just a little sloppy here and there. But uh, I like the way Jared Culver is continuing to develop. I continue to see that uh, there there is a smoothness to his three-point shot that wasn't there just just a little while ago. He's getting more comfortable, more confident putting up those catch-and-shoot threes uh, or even pull-up threes. Um, pull-up threes, dribble threes, however you want to look at it. Generally from the from the, from the top area of the three there. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, you know, even, even from right arc, left arc, I mean, Jared Culver, generally speaking, has been fairly solid uh, from the outside, at least lately. It's like I keep wanting to say top of the key, but I'm basically, you know, those straightaway threes, I guess is the only term out there for that one. Generally speaking, straightaway threes, top of the arc, top of the arc, I guess you could call it as well. 
Oh, it's just all over the place. There's wings, but yeah, he didn't go over there. Uh, he's had an overall good, good couple of games, so I'm I'm happy to see what I'm seeing out of Culver again. The aggressiveness, either catch and shoot slash pull up, uh, catch and shoot or pull up threes or drive into the hoop. Culver, that's kind of what his game is going to be, I think, as he gets better and better in the league. And then, of course, again, adding some assists and hopefully, again, getting stronger at the free throw line, this and that. So, nice solid win. The Wolves go 2-1. and one. What a nice uh, solid week. Not bad at all. It's not the easiest choice, really, for an Alpha Wolf for this week. It's not the easiest choice. Uh, Andrew Wiggins, again, I, I didn't even say how he was. Yeah, he, how solid he was, generally speaking. He made half of his threes again. And again, the three that uh, kind of helped the Wolves take over down the stretch. He, he set the tone in this game. Andrew Wiggins did. He's not going to get an Alpha Wolf because he just came back the other day and he was not that good against Memphis. But this was an Alpha Wolf type of game. He plays like this. He's going to get the Alpha Wolf every game. Uh, because it was just a solid... Everything you want out of Andrew Wiggins, except getting steals or blocks. He didn't get that in the game, but and he'll he'll get those at times. I didn't like that he missed half his free throws. That's annoying. It's just I don't know. It just keeps happening with him. But an overall solid night. You can only complain so much. I mean, eight to one assist to turnover ratio. That's freaking beautiful. Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, playing that point forward game out there, kind of running the point better than Napier can. Basically, a, he doubled Napier's assist to turnover ratio. Just look at it that way. So. Uh, in, in a positive way, of course. Um, very solid night for Andrew Wiggins, generally speaking. Generally speaking. Uh, again, the Alpha Wolf this week, I think I keep struggling. Should it go to Covington? I think he's kind of going to get like a, yeah, Covington and Culver. I'm, I'm going to have them share it. Because Culver, you know, he generally had an awesome week. And I love what he's doing out there. Covington was solid in all the games this week. Covington was the guy we'd like him to be. You know, hitting half of his shots playing solid defense, not getting too trigger-happy when he's not shooting well, and not being super limited when he is shooting well. Like, oh, he was 4 of 8. Why? Why only 8, though? Why only 8? You know, he should be doing a lot more than that. He's 6 of 10. You know, you get 6 of 10. What was the other game just now? I mean, you know, 6 of 10 against Memphis, very solid, 4 of 7 from downtown. So Covington, absolutely, you know, a factor in every game. Every game. And it's nice to see him playing just a better overall efficient game that he had been playing. Uh, 6 to 12 in the Portland game. So it's, it's nights like that. That, you know, he provides the solid defense. He, he does a little bit of everything. I don't like that he's playing power forward. I think, I'm going to keep saying it when Carl comes back. Gorgie Zhang needs to play a significant amount of minutes. I'm going to keep saying it. Gorgie Zhang needs to play a significant amount of minutes. When uh, Carl Anthony Towns comes back, he he absolutely needs to do that. So I mean, <laughs> the Timberwolves' defense being way better with Carl Anthony Towns not playing tells you something. It tells you that well, I mean, <laughs> somebody else in his position is doing something right. That's what it tells you. The offense isn't the same because Carl averages twenty six points a game. You know, Gorgie's like a fourteen fifteen point a game guy when he's starting, which is totally fine. I mean, that's totally fine. I mean, you look at Rashawn Holmes. who's like a starting center, basically de facto power forward center for the uh, uh, Sacramento Kings. I mean, you wouldn't dare take him out of the starting lineup. That guy does everything. He does everything. You wouldn't dare take him out unless you had, you know, unless you had Shaquille O'Neal as your starting center or whatever. You know, anybody that's way up at the top. Or let's say Anthony Davis, somebody like that. But you'd still want him in the lineup. You'd, you'd still make room for him. You have to make room for him. Corey Zhang needs to be getting minutes. I don't want to see Gorgie Zhang getting any DNPs unless he's really sick or really hurt. And he's the kind of guy who's going to play through a lot of stuff and he's still going to play at a high level, I think. Gorgie Zhang needs to be playing regular minutes. I mean, again, you complain about the contract, uh, yet when he's out there and he's productive, what the flying bleep are you complaining about? What what the hell are you complaining about? Play the bleeping guy and he'll give you production for his for your money rather than having him rot on the bench. Oh, he's overpaid. He sucks. He's overpaid. Screw Gorgie Zhang. He sucks. He's overpaid. So, but yeah. How are you going to get rid of that contract? Oh, well, you know, it is what it is. No, it doesn't have to be what it is. Play the bleeping guy and you're going to get production out of him. Um, you know, the NBA players make a billion dollars a year because because of the TV contract. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. You know, I don't like it very much. I don't agree with it necessarily. I don't blame anybody for earning money. You know, earning money if they earned it. That type of thing. Just, it's a little bit bloated because of that TV contract, I think. <laughs> I'm glad people like the NBA. Uh, too bad for, you know, some of the great players of the past that 
probably deserved, you know, more TV viewership than they got back in the old days. That were because the NBA was was. I'm going to tell you, the NBA was. Uh, I think it was an overall better product in the old days because some of the players and the personalities were just. I don't know. They were just more likable than nowadays. But still a great game. Still a great product. Generally speaking. Uh, as long as it's balanced out, not 99 threes and zero of everything else, so or one percent of everything else. That's my only complaint, generally speaking. Well, point made. Play Gorgie. Play Gorgie. Play Gorgie when Carl comes back. Okay, starting him at power forward or very significant minutes at both power forward and center uh, when guys like Covington and Carl sit, because they're going to have to sit sometimes. You know, they're not going to play 48 minutes a game, and Gorgie needs to be in there frequently, very frequently. Give him minutes, damn it. Give him minutes. I mean, I'm just going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. You're going to get sick of me saying it, but I'm going to say it. Okay, well, we'll be back right after this. Should I say it again? When Carl Anthony Towns comes back, keep playing Gorgie Jang significant minutes. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion. Segment number two, time to preview three games. The Houston Sprockets, as I like to call them. Basically Sprockets, the owner. You know, he likes to fire George Jetson all the time. George Jetson's a general manager. Yeah, well, no, maybe not. Maybe it's not quite George Jetson. He, George Jetson might be, uh, maybe he's the head coach. I think Vinrock Vince Germano would like that very much because uh, not a big fan of the uh, formerly known as Coach Pringles. Obviously, the mustache is missing, so, yeah. Okay, like, Pringles, you're fired! I think Vinrock, Vince Germano, and other uh, Lager fans that uh, experienced Pringles as their coach might have uh, felt that way. So, <laughs> January 11th, right as the Vikings are playing the San Francisco 49ers, who, uh, the Minnesota Terminals will be playing the first place Houston Sprockets, in uh, Spacely Sprocket Center. Okay, Toyota Center. I'll calm down now. We're, will Carl finally play? Will Carl not play? Who knows? Uh, hopefully. And if he doesn't, it is what it is. The Sprockets beat the Timberwolves by 20 points back on November the 26th. Not a good night necessarily. 125 to 105. Interesting overall matchup between these two clubs. Houston's the number one team in the league in offense with 119. Total rebounds were basically five and six. Houston's ahead barely by one, yeah, by like, you know, uh, 0.4 rebounds a game. <laughs> Field goal percentage, Houston, not surprisingly, is well ahead, especially with the uh, absence of Carl Anthony Towns. Rules are 26th in the league and field goal percentage, Rockets 17th. But of course, free throw percentage, eh, well, you know, they're a little better. It doesn't matter. Three point percentage, Houston's only 20th because they probably take 9,000 threes and don't make a whole lot. This is what I don't want to happen. Timberwolves are 29th, by the way. Yeah, terrible. 32%. But um, this is what I don't want to happen, though. Do you see this? How they're really focused on that three-point shot. They keep keep shooting threes. But they're 20th in the league, though. So, I mean, you know, that's what I don't want. I don't want, like, a volume of, like, 40, 50 threes a game and you're shooting, you know, 34, 35% at best. That's garbage. That's the brand of basketball I don't like a whole lot. That's what I'm afraid could could happen with this Houston Rockets 2.0 approach with the Minnesota Timberwolves. That's what I'm a little afraid of long term. So, <laughs> if you don't agree with me, I I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's okay to shoot a good number of threes, but if you're not if you're not consistently making them, I think you know there's other aspects to the game that might be higher percentage that might help. I'm not trying to come off as a jackass. I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, you keep burning your hand in the fire. Why don't you turn it off? Turn the damn fire off. Or stop putting your damn hand in the fire. I mean, hello? You know? That's just my approach. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all. Uh, Clint Capella, gotta love him. 14 and a half rebounds a game. He's definitely leading the way. But Russell Westbrook, the three uh, triple-double guy, averaging about eight rebounds a game as well. Seven assists. I don't think this is a good mix. They're winning basketball games now, but come playoff time... James Harden's playoff history has not been good. Russell Westbrook's playoff history has not been good. Uh, Kevin Durant's playoff history was also in question, but he was on the Warriors. Uh, obviously, his talent and his skill put the Warriors over the top, where they were very, virtually unbeatable until uh, Kevin Durant got hurt, basically. They were virtually unbeatable, as much as I flip, flip and hated that team. 
it was like, what are you going to do? You know, I mean, what are you going to do? They were just too stacked. And Kevin Durant's addition to that team made them virtually unbeatable. The only team that could beat that team would be would have been the uh, Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls could have beaten that team because they would have found a way. I'm telling you, they would have found a way. Go ahead and keep telling me that's the best team ever assembled. Nobody's going to beat them. Uh, the Chicago Bulls, the Chicago Bulls, I'll talk a little better now, would... Uh, find a way. They know what they knew what they were doing more than any team ever. Highest IQ I've ever seen on a basketball court. Maybe the best defense I've ever seen and the most clutch overall play and the best player on the planet that ever lived. Uh, along with a few others that were pretty damn good as well. Okay. Point made. Point made. Houston Rockets are a very tough matchup for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, I'll never forget when we got to play them in the first round, our first playoff appearance in forever. And it was like, we never play well against this team. And I'm not that confident the Wolves are going to go into Houston and win. Why would I be confident? I mean, it's probably going to be another meh game, I think. But at the same time, I think it'll be lower scoring than it's been because the Wolves' defense has been outstanding. Will Will Carl come back and have a inspired effort, but the Wolves still lose by 20 points because we get, you know, we wind up with like 115, they get 135. It's, I don't know. Uh, that's the one thing I'm concerned with as well. I oh, love Carl. I want his defense to get better, though. I want his defense to be better. I want him to make other players better defensively as well. Just kind of make it kind of a team defense thing, which is what's been going on lately. I don't think the Wolves beat the Houston Rockets. Uh, you're going to need a. You're going to need basically. You're going to need Houston to get too trigger happy and have a bad game. You know, guys like Harden and Westbrook to just shoot poorly. Maybe Clint Capella to not be out there or to be in foul trouble early and often, that type of thing. It's going to have to be something like that where they're just off, kind of like Lillard was not good, you know, and they were tired and all that good stuff. Carmelo was tired. Um, I can't believe I'm talking about Carmelo Anthony and the Portland Trailblazers. It sounds funny, but, well, I, I don't know. it is what it is. <laughs> when you get a little older and you're a valuable player, but you're not a, a superstar, and, um, you know, you get moved around a bit because other people want to have you on their team, and this team is, like, okay with uh, not paying you a billion dollars, that type of thing. Um, I just don't see the Wolves winning this game, again, unless Houston's just kind of off, and somebody like Jared Culver and Andrew Wiggins has, like, a huge, huge night. Andrew Wiggins has a huge night. It's going to need multiple players to really step up and play well, like Napier, 20 points, Culver, 20 points, Gorgie. You know, twenty and ten, twenty fifteen and and uh, and five. You know, like twenty ten five, like a Kevin Garnett type of night. It's going to need something like that, but I just don't see it happening. Houston Rockets beat the Timberwolves, one twenty five to uh, no, uh, yeah, no, 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 one fifteen to one hundred five, something like that. The Wolves will be in the game; they'll be in the mix, but Houston will just kind of pull away when it matters. I, I expect the scoring to be down a little bit from Houston's aspect. I expect their field goal percentage to be lower, but I don't know. They're a damn good rebounding team. They're going to get some cheap putbacks, and uh, obviously they're going to do their thing. You know, James Harden's going to get his stupid calls. Russell Westbrook's going to get his stupid calls, this and that. And I think Houston's just going to be a little bit better at the end of the day. Uh, they won a lot of games this year, and I predicted they would win a lot of games and have a lot of home court advantage in the playoffs, but it's going to mean a whole lot of nothing when they run into Los Angeles or Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> see what I did there? Yeah, Los Angeles or Los Angeles in the postseason. As long as Paul Bleeping George can stay healthy, he doesn't stub his toe and is out for three months, but, well, that's, uh, that's kind of how things are these days. Uh, this guy's out with a stubbed toe. He may, he's going to miss a game or two, and then three weeks later, oh boy, you know, he's still he's still he's still a ways away. You know, he's 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 practicing five on five, but he's still got a long way to go. It's like he's practicing five on five, and he's still got a long way to go. What? Uh, you know, I don't know. <sighs> Welcome to fantasy basketball. It is just, ooh, any any frustrations I've had with the NBA and guys holding out for a long time with injuries. <laughs> play fantasy basketball, it will amplify it by... Uh, wow, it is ridiculous. Okay, Oklahoma City Thunder. Revenge factor. They're coming to Target Center. Screw you, Chris Paul. Screw you, Dennis Sh Schroeder, I guess. I mean, it's like we've heard three different versions of that one. Obviously, there was Jay Schrader for the Oakland Raiders, uh, Schroeder and, you know, Peanuts, Charlie Brown, all that good stuff, and now Schroeder. Okay, Schroeder, welcome on board, Mr. Schroeder. Oklahoma City's playing pretty good basketball, though. 22-16. and 16. I've, Again, the Rockets are in first place in our division. Oklahoma City's third place in the Northwest Division. The Wolves riding the pine, unfortunately. But we've been playing better. We've been playing better. Uh, Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins calling Andrew Wiggins. Calling Andrew Wiggins. 
<laughs> All systems are go, Andrew. Go out there and crush this club, please. Uh, Carl, good game, but again, made the wrong free throw <laughs> at the wrong time. And uh, yeah, that was frustrating. He missed the wrong free throw first and then made the wrong one second. That really hurt the Wolves' chances. Andrew Wiggins, he did not play in this game, did he? The last time around when the Wolves... Yeah, no, he didn't. So, calling Andrew Wiggins. Be healthy for this game, Andrew. We could use your uh, your old magic that burns those Oklahoma City Thunder. That's why you go to Wikipedia and it says owner, Andrew Wiggins. For the Oklahoma City Thunder, he's their owner. He owns them. Yeah. Um, no more stupid plays. Tuck your damn shirt in, or jersey in, I guess you could say. Take smart shots, and boy, it's going to be an entertaining game, though. i got to think, this is going to be a lot of fun between OKC and Minnesota. Uh, last time around, again, 139-127. It was tuck-in gate. It was Chris Paul's a jackass gate. Oh, God. I ugh, Chris Paul. Oof. Ugh. If, if you like Chris Paul, I think you're crazy. Um, but, well, all respect to you, I guess, if you do. I used to like him. I liked him with the uh, New Orleans Hornets before he started bitching and moaning that he's got to get out of there because it's just, you know, oh, poor me. I, I can't be on the Hornets anymore because I just can't. And then he was on the Clippers and turned into tornado flop. I just, I hated that. I hated it. I think everybody did. Uh, Clippers were the flop city of the league for the longest time. <sighs> Enough of my ranting. Uh, another guy that I've always liked, Netherlands Noel. Obviously, again, he's a, he, he's a guy that I think should get more minutes. I really do. He's another guy, one of those big men that in today's league, I think needs to get more minutes. Uh, you know, today's league, they don't get minutes because it's just all about guards and, and stretch fours and this and that. But then you get these natural guys who can block shots and get rebounds and, and just do a lot of things that help you win games. I mean, if you don't have the ball, you can't shoot it. And if you can't shoot it, you can't score. I mean, you know, rebounding gives you the ball back. Blocking shots denies them the ball on the other side. Stuff like that. Just simple little things. Uh, but this is going to be a very entertaining back and forth battle. I got to think that every time we play the OKC Thunder, it's extremely dramatic. It's kind of like the Minnesota Vikings versus the New Orleans Saints. I mean, how many games have the Vikings and Saints played the last 13 years plus that weren't extremely back and forth and extremely dramatic? Going into the 2009 NFC Championship game, I knew what was coming. I didn't think we were going to fumble the ball five flipping times and literally give it away. But I knew it was going to be a mess. I knew it was going to be frustrating. I knew there were going to be turnovers. It would be back and forth, this and that. And it was. Uh, and it's always been that way. Uh, that's how it is usually with, this, with these two teams. Even during the Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook days, it was always very, very dramatic. Uh, Kevin Love hitting a big three that put us into overtime. And then Kevin Durant hitting a three that put us into double overtime and we ended up losing the game. But Kevin Love had like 50 points. It was a fun night. But the Wolves lost this and that. And the Wolves have had some very dramatic games with Andrew Wiggins getting career highs and hitting game-winning threes that get to 40 points. It has been a lot of fun. Um, Andrew Wiggins, it's time. Andrew Wiggins, go out there and get your 35, 40 points and help the Wolves beat this club in tar target center. If you have the time, your schedule allows and your bank account allows, go to this game. Go to this game in Target Center. Go to Target Center and, and, and uh, be there and uh, enjoy a very, very, very good basketball game. This is highly recommended as far as I'm concerned. Oklahoma City, Minnesota, beautiful. And heckle and boo and trash Chris Paul all you want. Stay classy if you can. Stay away from the middle fingers and the F-bombs if you could. But, you know, annoy the hell out of him all you want. Make him miss, hopefully. Hopefully it hurts him. I'm guessing I won't hurt him too much. But uh, it's going to be an entertaining game. That's all i got to say. I do believe that the Minnesota Timberwolves will defeat the Oklahoma City Thunder. I expect an inspired effort, regardless who's in the game or not, between Carl, Anthony Towns, or Gargi, or whoever. But uh, I expect an inspired effort, and I do th see Andrew Wiggins showing up. Uh, it did not help that Andrew was not out there last time around. As he's had his injuries, he's had his sicknesses, this and that. Um, I can't remember if this was during his... Uh, he got sick right after his grandmother died, that type of thing. So that was unfortunate. He got sick again. He's had some bouts with the flu and such, has Andrew. And, um, well, the whole Christmas season, Christmas and New Year's, it's like everybody was sick, it seemed like. Some people, it was a cold, and others, it was a flu. It was like a curse. It's like the you know, the devil was having his his fun with everybody for a good two, two and a half weeks or so. That was ridiculous. It was very depressing. Um, but, uh Regardless, Minnesota is going to have a very entertaining victory over Oklahoma City. Will it get to OT? Will it not? I'm going to pick a final score, something along the likes of 
123. Let's go with a funny number. 123 to 120. Minnesota ends up winning. Maybe Andrew Wiggins hits a big three to help the Wolves win. I got that feeling. Culver show up and play well, play strong, this and that. But Andrew Wiggins will be the leading scorer, and the Timberwolves will defeat the Oklahoma City Thunder by three in target center. And it's going to be a fun one. Monday, January the 13th. Hopefully that's bad luck. For OKC Thunder and not us this time around. Uh, boy, oh boy. We owe them We owe them one like you wouldn't believe. If there's any competitiveness in your body, you want to beat that bleeping team. Indiana Pacers come to Target Center on Wednesday, January the, 20, uh, the 15th, the 29th. Where did I come up with that one? Um, Minnesota. That was only the second time of the year we'll be playing Oklahoma City Thunder. And of course, Indiana. We're hosting them on the 15th and then just two days later we go to Indiana. So it's a quick back and forth and we're all done. Indiana's a solid offensive team. They're in the bottom half, but still the upper half of the bottom half. Uh, they're 24th in rebounding. Field goal percentage, they're way up there. And there's no Victor Oladipo yet. He's another one of those guys who... He had a significant injury last year, but my God, he's still not playing. The injury was last season. Don't forget. It was late in the year, but it was last year. It was significant, but again, January 10th, 11th, 12th, and he's targeting the 29th finally. He's been playing five on five all, you know, the last two weeks, and he's still a ways away. Huh? You know, stuff like that. I get the precautions and all that, but it, boy, does it get old. Uh, Indiana's two and three in their last five. They lost most recently to Miami Heat, who was obviously a very good team. They beat Philadelphia on New Year's Eve. Wow. Well played, Indiana. That's good. And, yeah, that's really good. Beat the, uh, lost to Denver at home in, you know, Indiana. Lost to Atlanta. Ouch. And then beat the Charlotte Hornets 115-104. to 104. Or should I say the Charlotte Hornets? Uh, Michael Jordan's, uh, you know, we're going to go out there. We're going to reinstitute the name the Charlotte Hornets. So, uh, yep, the Charlotte Hornets. They beat the Hornets uh, on the 6th of January. Who do they play up and coming? I don't even have this set up the way I'd like. There we go. They're a good offensive team. They sure are, or at least they're efficient. They're efficient offensively. Fifth in three-point percentage. Fifth in field goal percentage. They make their shots bottom line. They're an efficient offensive team. They don't score a trillion points. They score 109 a game, which in this day and age is slightly below average. They don't rebound a whole lot, maybe because there's not a whole lot of rebounds to be had because they're making shots. Miles Turner is one of those guys that everybody, you know, everybody would like to have. Uh, you know, he's not this glamorous butt-kicking player. But he does a lot of valuable things. He averages two blocks a game, two two points. He only averages 5.8 rebounds, which is weird. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, he's got kind of an all-around game. He can shoot three. He's not great, but he can shoot them. Uh, Doug McDermott has been a guy who's, who's who, who can get on fire. Aaron Holiday's a 40% guy. Justin Holiday. What's with all these holidays? My goodness, it's, it's, it's the holidays. <laughs> yeah, well, it is the holidays in Indiana. Jeremy Lamb, he's been all over the place. Oklahoma City and such. Malcolm Brogdon, very solid guy. 17 and a half a game. Sabonis. Sabonis just doesn't have that three-point shot that his father did at this stage, but he does have an all-around game. That uh, he's, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of like a little bit of a Doncic type, but yeah, a little bit. He gets his assists. He rebounds like crazy. Plays a bigger game, obviously, than Doncic. Uh, Doncic is a guard, but he does a whole lot of everything. That's why he... You know, Doncic, there's a big side to Doncic. Obviously, he's a very large uh, point guard. Point guard, he plays point guard, but he's taller like a small forward. Uh, Sabonis, obviously more of a power forward type, but does a whole lot of everything. Uh, good passing and all that. Similar to his father, but doesn't have that three-point shot that his father did necessarily yet, but maybe someday. Indiana's always been a thorn in the side for the Wolves. I, I don't know. We, like, we, we don't beat Indiana very often. Uh, once in a while, we do. The Wolves' home record this year is not that good. So I'm kind of like, uh, you know, I like the way the Wolves have been playing. I'm hopeful. It's like I want to be optimistic, but it kind of depends on the situation with Indiana. Are they playing a back-to-back? It's like you're hoping for that coming into this one, and they're not. They're, they'll have hosted Philadelphia and then heading to Minnesota. So we're just a quick one-game road trip, and then they go back home to host us two days later. Uh I don't know. I don't know what to make of this one. It's a eh, Indiana's always a, just. I don't know. No matter who's going to been on that team, of course there will be no Victor Oladipo. January twenty eighth. At least there's finally a date. It took the whole bleeping season for them to say, "Oh, okay, we're targeting a day against Chicago on the 29th. Well, finally, my God. I mean, and I'm not trying to be an ass. I'm really not. I respect you know trying to become back a hundred percent ready to go. But 
God, it, there's no league like the NBA when it comes to injuries. There is no league when it comes to injury re- recovery time. I've just never seen anything like it, never. And I don't want a guy to go out there and get re-injured. I respect that 110%, but uh, ooh, they prolong it, boy. I'm telling you, it feels it feels too long to me. It really does. Um, boy, I don't know what to make of this one. I want to believe the Wolves are going to split with the Pacers, so I guess I'll pick a win here. Uh, going to Indiana, that's like, you know, you know, like 80, 85% of the time we lose there. We almost never win in Indiana, so stepping out in good faith, Minnesota's going to beat Indiana. Oh, my. You know, their defense is solid. They're very efficient shooters. Very efficient team. They just, they know how to, they, they just play a good, solid game. I've always had a soft spot for the Pacers, and this is just kind of who they've always been generally speaking. I mean, different group of players, different personalities over the years. You know, you had, uh, you know, you had all different kinds of guys. Ron Artest, when his name was Ron Artest. Yeah. Uh, for quite a while there, and he was so good for them for so long, and then he got in trouble and all that with, uh, you know, the the malice of the palace. We all know, well, not everybody, but most of us know about that. Can't believe that's 13, 14 years ago already. Whew. Wow. It's 14 years ago. Mm. Weird. Uh, Minnesota's going to beat the Indiana Pacers. It's not going to be the highest scoring game. I'm hoping for a good night from Andrew Wiggins again. Carl's got to be back by this point. Carl Anthony Towns, that's my prediction. He's going to play this week. It sounds like he will at some point. So I'll, I'm going to predict... This guy, I'm going to predict Wiggins has kind of an all-around solid game. Culver's going to be a factor down the stretch. I think he's going to have like 18 points, something like that. But Carl will be the main cog. 30 points, 15 rebounds, a game like that. But Gorgie is going to still play a role. And I got to hope that, uh, you know, Ryan Saunders is a guy that doesn't just bench players and say hell with you. I've noticed that about him. That's good. Maybe once in a while it ends up that way just because of the matchup. But uh, you're going to want Gorgie out there getting them rebounds and doing all the other things he does. You're going to want to play solid defense against this club, obviously. Uh, Coming is going to be a huge factor, though, against all these good shooters. It's strong defense, and you're going to need Wiggins to be challenging players out on that perimeter and Culver with that strong defense. You're going to need guys, those three guys challenging players. That's just, This is the kind of game I want. Robert Covington, a small forward. Start Gorgie at power. Start Gorgie at power forward so you can have Covington out you know, guarding on the perimeter because that's going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing. Obviously, Wiggins and uh, Col- uh, Culver will be the main guys defending players out there. Uh, that's what I want. That's what I want. And, of course, a Kogi, you're hoping for more of that hustle, this and that, uh, along the way, again, defensively and such. Minnesota wins the game. I'm thinking 112, 105, something along the lines of that. I got a feeling the Wolves will play solid defense, but then we end up losing yeah, next week. The uh, next week's show, probably not pick a win against Indiana, but we'll be talking about that game on next week's show. So with that, Wolves go two and one again. I got a feeling we're going to be creeping a little closer to 500 going into next week. So that's a positive thought. With that, we'll get to fan interaction. We'll definitely be hearing from Wayne Hunt at the very least. We are back here on Timberwolves Explosion segment number three, final segment and fan interaction segment. We'll get to the Twitter account. We do have some reaction today, which is really nice. Nice to hear from multiple people today. At Wolves Explosion, at Wolves Explosion is the Twitter account. We will jump into that first like we always do, or so I'd like to believe. Thank you, Vinrock, Vince Germano, Levi Brown, and Tanae Brown for retweeting the most recent show. Thank you so very much, Uh, Shabazz, Naz, and David Stern. Episode 270. This is 271. As uh, that's how we keep rolling forward. Vinrock Vince Germano, of course, out of Melbourne, Australia, and the Courtside Podcast, like I talked about earlier in the show. Awesome show. Highly recommend it always. Levi Brown and Tanae Brown out of New Zealand. I heard from uh, Tanae Brown on this show in the past with the audio submissions. I'll tell you how to do that at the end of the show. Can't wait to hear from you again someday. Uh, I'd love to hear from uh, <laughs> I'd love to hear from Levi Brown, Vinrock, Vince Germano, Wayne Hunt, anytime, anytime, audio submissions, obviously, and anybody else out there that uh, maybe I don't know you yet, uh, jump on board, love to hear from you, audio submission route, we'll tell you how to do that at the end of the show, so we'll move forward now, heard a couple times from Levi Brown, and there he is, he says, yep, another great game from G and Napier too, that was, 
the uh, the whole uh, that was against the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers on Jan the fifth. John Mayer tweeted out, "Should we have the conversation about starting Cat G together again, like the old days? Now or later?" Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, John Mayer. Thank you, thank you, John Mayer, and thank you, Levi Brown, for posting that. Uh, yes, for uh, getting that rolling out there, you know, retweeting with the comment, that type of thing. That's what they call that. Yes, uh, Tanae apparently liked that as well. They need to start. They need to start together. Robert Cummings needs to go to the small forward position. You will have three. Well, yeah, you'll have at least three good defenders as long as you're, well. You might have a whole good defensive lineup. I think it's a good defensive team right there. Uh, Gorgi obviously plays good, solid defense. Carl's defense will probably get better. There'll be less pressure on him, per se, defensively. Robert Covington can move out a bit closer to the perimeter to play defense without giving up the, the paint. You know what I'm saying? I mean, without uh, hello. And then, of course, you got Wiggins. Wiggins' defense has been better. Obviously, it's been better for the last, uh, you know, generally speaking. He's had some not-so-good games defensively, but generally speaking, his defense has been good for about a calendar year now or so. Uh, even slightly before, uh, yeah, slightly before uh, Tom Thibodeau was let go. And, you know, obviously Culver's defense is very good. It's very good. He's not perfect, but it's very good. Uh, let's keep moving up a bit. Yep, uh, yeah, Mary Upton A was, was worried about that Viking game, and I was too, very much so, because it comes to me, because, you know, <laughs> we all, all my podcasts follow each other, I guess, just in case, you know, this and that. Levi Brown tweets out he was replying to wow he was he had uh, he had uh, Gorgie Zhang and two others that's interesting and then Tene and myself random but still impressive I believe that's that statistic let's see if I can pull that up here well yep there it is yep and that's yep third player in NBA history and this is also on the Facebook page that I tweeted out as well here from Wayne Hunt there but yeah the third player in NBA history to have twenty plus points ten plus rebounds six plus assists four plus blocks and four plus three points made in one game uh, that was awesome. Uh, the only other guys were uh, James Harden, and why am I blanking on the other guy there? I know who that is, and I'm blanking. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, come on, I know who that is, but I'm blanking. But uh, Gorgie Zhang obviously did it, so good for him. Gorgie Zhang and James Harden have done it in the past. Mm. So we'll move forward now. Oh, I closed the Twitter account. I closed the Twitter account. So we keep moving forward. Now i got to pop this all back up again. Isn't that fun? I believe that might be it, actually. Uh, yep, there it is. Yep, Dylan Brooks killed us again. Yeah, we'll get back to that. Yeah, in about 10 seconds, just making sure. Yeah, and it was a very random statistic, very random. Uh, Dylan Brooks killed us again. Yes, he did, 28 points, and he had multiple threes, and it's just, that guy is a Wolves killer, and the Memphis Grizzlies continue to kill the Timberwolves. So extremely frustrating. I feel you 100% there, uh, Levi. Oh, unbelievably frustrating. Crazy. So now we'll go to Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves Explosion. Facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves Explosion. Look it up. Like it. and Follow it, so to speak. And comment on there if you could. Love to hear from you. Always greatly appreciated. Now here's again that same uh, amazing statistic. You'll hear from Wayne Hunt here. Wayne Hunt again. Again, Courtside's Alpha Dog. The Courtside Podcast Alpha Dog from Sydney, Australia. He says... They gotta start. They gotta start slash play him. If a player is making his mark in NBA history, it's a no-brainer. If Cat is going to jack threes up, might as well let Gorgie hustle for rebounds and do the other blue-collar work. When he's open, he's been known to knock down the uh, the old three himself. So why not give him? Why not give yourself options? Amen. Um, a thousand percent agreement. A thousand percent agreement because. Well, yeah, see, Gorgie can hit the three, too. There is no reason Gorgie shouldn't be getting significant minutes and playing with Carl Anthony Towns. There's no reason why he shouldn't be. He's earning his money now, you know? Rather than complaining about his contract, about complaining about a contract of a guy while you're benching him, why not play him? And then, actually, wow, you actually get significant production from the guy. The defense is way better. The defensive numbers on your team are, like, light years ahead of what they were when he wasn't playing. Uh, and, you know, I mean, he's he's a difference maker, is Gorgie Zhang. And again, that three-point shot is silky smooth. There was a time Gorgie from three was like, okay, random here and there, oh, I missed. Okay, oh, cool, he made one, nice. But now it's like a consistent, solid thing. It's a silky smooth shot. It's a lot better than those ran, than those uh, mid those long twos that he used to take, and he'd make sometimes, and he'd miss sometimes. And that's when Gorgie was looked on as a guy like, ah, he's just kind of okay, 
you know, there's a lot more to Gorgie's game. And it, it he has adjusted to the modern game very well. He has adjusted to the system very, very well. He's going to play in the league another 10 years if he keeps playing like that. Okay, maybe not. He's, he's, he's already like 30, isn't he? I can't believe that. But no, he's going to play in the league for a long time yet. He's going to get another contract if he keeps playing like this. Go ahead and laugh at that statement. No, he is going to get another contract, you know, regardless if it's $16 million a year or $12 million a year. He's going to get double-digit millions a year again because he's a valuable guy. He might get 16 again. He just might. And I won't complain because I want him on the team. I want him with the Wolves. I'm not trading Gorgie, you know, if, if you want to, unless you're going to get like the moon for him, I want to, I want to keep him. So thank you very much, Wayne Hunt. That was awesome. I agree with you at 1000%. And now the, the Memphis rant, the rant from the, the rant, uh, he's a Memphis Grizzlies fan, of course. And, but at the same time, he's recognizing the massive frustration. You'll get some multiple responses here. Wayne Hunt says, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Try not to make us look like a playoff team today, Joey. This is right before the game. Also, with all the talk about Ja Morant, keep an eye on our rookie, my main man, Brandon Cook, Jersey, Jersey worthy, Jersey worthy. Who's your Jersey worthy of the week? Well, I guess Brandon Cook's your Jersey worthy of the week, huh? <laughs> uh, he, yeah, Brandon Clark is, is a solid player. I like his future. Uh, I got to see more of him. I got to see a, a more of a sample size just for my own, you know, personal thing. But uh, I, I don't really disagree with you thus far. Um, <laughs> I, I need to see more, though. That's just me. Um, I don't mean it in a bad way. I just need to see uh, 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 more and more of a sample size, per se. And I'm, I'm not saying that as a bad way. I was saying, watch us blow it again. It's been so bad. Vince Germano said Culver's having a good game, and damn right he does. Fans need to give him time and not to expect good games all the time. I mean, look at his body. He's a kid. He's built like a teenager. Yeah, he is. But trust me, you have a beauty there. And I, I like him, too. A lot of people in this town are thinking he's, because of his shot, was so not so promising that he's got a long way to go. And I need to keep a better look on Brandon Clark. I, I do. I'm just going to apologize for that. Uh, and again, it was a very small sample size, only like 17 minutes, so that's kind of how that goes. Keep an eye on him very closely. Wayne Hunt responds to Vince Romano saying, uh, was going to say the same thing. He's got to learn a lot by season's end. He's going to learn a lot by season's end. I apologize. He's going to make rookie mistakes, but stick with him. Kind of reminds me of Shumpert a little, but with a higher stealing. He has been getting better. Uh, his shot's been getting smoother, and you can see the improvement already happening. Um, you know, some NBA rookies are really slow out of the gate, and I, I, I don't know. You can tell there is there's something there. There really is. Uh, is he a perennial All Star? Probably not, but there is absolutely something there. And you know the efforts there. You know the heart is there, and it's not just a gritty. Oh, he he's got heart, but then the guy's like one of thirteen. You know, like Mark Madsen. Yay. You know, so he's not, he's he's got he's got a lot more of a game than just some random role player, cheerleader guy. Okay, well, Vince Romano replies back, says, I really like him coming out of, I really liked him coming out of college. I remember I said on the show, if we keep pick four, I want Culver. Wow, yeah, wow. Yep, that would have been the Lakers. Huh. Yeah, that's right. Yep, you did, and then you traded it and eventually got uh, all the, all that uh, hullabaloo that you got there. That was pretty interesting stuff. You know, Anthony Davis and such. Wayne Hunt, wraps up this little uh, thread saying, yep, I remember, if you do want to part with him, Joey, I'll trade Iggy, you, you Iggy for him. And it's like, nope, <laughs> why would I do that, right? That would be a dangerous decision, I think. So now we will move to the other <laughs> the other uh, thread I had going here. Well, at least uh, Wayne had going here. He said, well, a few things after today's game against Memphis. Number one, Timberwolves shouldn't be dropping games against rebuilding teams, even with Cat out. It says a lot about where the Wolves really are. Yeah, it does. And uh, John Morant sure made us look silly. Um, as good as our defense has been, it wasn't that good in the Memphis game. I mean, 119, it's not the worst total, but it, it's bad. And John ja Morant sure made everyone look silly with those behind-the-back crossover dribbles. And sometimes it's like, what can you do? But still, uh, Dylan Brooks made the Wolves look stupid as well. It was ugh, 28 freaking points for Dylan Brooks. Mm. Two, can't sleep on Memphis. We are young, fast, and can cause real damage from beyond the arc. I noticed, yeah, you are young and fast, and yeah, you're you're you got a lot of good players on that team. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. 
And their record isn't that bad. 16 and 22. I mean, it's not like they're 16 and 70. You know, okay, I'm just making a number up. But, you know, I mean, there, there's a there's something there. And I do understand your frustrations with Tyus Jones on last week's show. Uh, not a whole lot of excitement going on. So much for the assist to turnover ratio. He had three turnovers and one assist in the game. Three turnovers and one assist. So it's turnover to assist ratio <laughs> in that game. Too. Yeah, Tyus Jones, not too special so far with Memphis. That's too bad. But he got his money. He got his money, right? Isn't that how? It, isn't that what it's all about these days? Oh, Tyus. Uh, God bless him. I would love to see him back in the, with the Timberwolves again someday. But, well, a lot of people are saying that we uh, upgraded with Napier. In some ways, yes. He's uh, more aggressive offensively, and he's more capable of having a, a big night that can change everything. It's just Tyus was kind of a stabilizer. That's what I appreciated about him, I suppose. Uh, continuing. Number three, I've, I've been really impressed with our rookie coach, what are your thoughts? And of course, uh, well, I mean, I, I think he's doing a good job too. Um, at the end of the day, that would be, of course, Taylor Jenkins. I I, I think he's solid too. Uh, it's I mean, well, he's getting he's getting a lot out of your players. I mean, I, I don't know him that well yet. It's a it's a small sample size, just getting started, just like Brandon Clark. But it's enough of a sample size to say he's getting a lot out of these players. Uh, guys are performing for him and. He's the kind of guy I think you can grow and develop with, and maybe he's the guy that's going to be with Memphis for many years, and he'll be the all-time winningest coach. Maybe. Because, you know, coaches come and go, they come and go, and then you have a guy that's there for forever, like Popovich with San Antonio. All those good teams the Spurs had, and they changed the coach, and they'd make it, they'd make it to the second round. Maybe they got to the West Final, but then they'd lose, and they'd lose, and they'd get farther. They'd always had all these good teams. And then all of a sudden, there's this guy named Popovich nobody's ever heard of. Duncan breaks his foot. Duncan, or excuse me, Duncan Robinson breaks his foot. The Spurs end up getting uh, Duncan in the draft, and things just kind of, the, the guys all grow together. Robinson was already a veteran, but Duncan grows with them. Parker grows with them. Ginobili grows, and you could just go on and on and on with all the other good role players, all the way up to, you know, Kawhi Leonard years later, who became the next star, uh, who wasn't even thought of as a star coming into that draft. And Popovich just did a hell of a job, and you know, I mean, it's hard to imagine the Spurs without Popovich now. And, uh, maybe maybe this is your guy. Who, who knows? Uh, hopefully, for your sake, it is. That he's the guy who's going to grow and develop with these young players, and there you go. So, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, he's doing a good job so far. He, he is. Uh, he's getting he's getting results. He's getting results, bottom line. That's what matters the most. Except out of Tyus Jones. But I think that's mostly Tyus Jones is so used to being here, other than that one year in Duke. Because who's going to struggle in Duke? with Coach K and all those other star players. Who's going to struggle in Duke? Nobody's going to struggle in Duke, but a completely different place and a long, and a lot of money, a lot of expectations, and <laughs> yeah, that. And then not really living up to them. That's the other thing. Number four, Culver will be good if the fans slash franchise can be patient, but does the will to win now and appease Cat make him easy trade bait? Number five, changes and needed in Minnesota. Thoughts? Yeah, I mean, of course there's changes, that are going to be needed. Certain guys that are just, you know, they're not that good. They're just kind of filling a role, this and that. We need guys that fit the, the, this system better. Uh, I, I think Culver is adjusting to it, but here's the point I keep saying too, and I'm sure you agree with me 100%. Gorgie has adjusted very well to it, very well. Uh, he, he'd been improving on his three, but now it's really good. It's a really good shot, and it's, it's so silky smooth. I mean, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous Jeng, you know, people called him that. Um, can't complain, man. I can't, I can't complain about what uh, Gorgie Zhang has done. Certain players have adjusted well to the system. Others, it's it's a work in progress, or they just don't belong, unfortunately. Again, uh, Gorgie in 14 games starting at center is 40% from beyond the arc, 13 points a game, 9 rebounds, 13.5 points a game, uh, over a steal and block each a game so far for Gorgie Zhang. So very, very solid, generally speaking. January... 43% from beyond the arc in the five games he's played. He's been uh, pretty damn good, generally speaking. Rebounds have been kind of hit and miss here and there, but generally speaking, he's done a hell of a job uh, in that role. So, great thoughts, Wayne Hunt, uh, generally speaking. Changes needed. Uh, I just hope Gorgie is not one of the changes. If Robert Cumming gets traded and you can get players that fit the system, that's good. Katie Bates' job, I'm kind of all over the place with him because he turns in games that don't really do a whole lot. Jordan Bell plays a role that I like, but, you know, obviously he's not a guy you want shooting threes. 
certain guys, I mean, and you don't need everybody to shoot threes. It's like, it's okay to have three-point shooting. It's not okay to go overboard. It's not okay to expect guys that it's just not their game to suddenly force that into their game. That's not okay. Obviously, and Jake Lehman's been out since, you know, 1985. So that's the other thing. I mean, it'd be nice to see the Timberwolves with Jake Lehman back in the lineup because obviously there's a silky solid game to him as well. Uh, he's, he's been missing in action forever. So, I mean, it's guys like that. Trevon Graham, love what he brings with all the defense and the energy, but if he's a, a piece that gets replaced by a guy that can, you know, that can hit three-point shots, be it maybe the draft, maybe the second round of the draft, Jalen Noel, hopefully he can continue to get better, this and that. So that's where, that's where I think with the changes. I mean, we don't necessarily need wholesale changes. We just need guys to, you know, we just need better defense. Obviously, we're going to make changes, just not wholesale changes per se. Um, point guard position is kind of all over the place. It depends on how you feel about Culver. Can he play? Is, is he your full-time point guard of the future? Is he going to be the shooting guard? There's going to be a lot of decisions made. Like, uh, Perhaps Covington gets traded, and of course Gorgi stays starting at power. Like in, in, in that sense, Andrews the small forward, full time. Culver's the shooting guard, who can you know be a playmaking shooting guard, along with uh, point guard du jour, whoever that is in the future, maybe in the first round of the draft this year. So that's kind of how things go with that. Oh, it's a it's a it's a lot of thoughts. And Wayne, you always uh, you always do a hell of a job of. Uh, bringing thought-provoking posts to this show. Thank you again so much. God bless you. With that said, I'm going to encourage you to join the show via the vo- audio submission route. Simply use the simple. Uh, you simply use the uh, voice recording application on any smart device on the planet. Press record. Treat it like a phone call. Hit stop. Save it. Email it to paladinolive at yahoo.com. Paladinolive at yahoo.com. I will then convert it into an MP3 file. Thanks to Zamzar or Converto.com. Can't thank you enough in advance for joining the show. If you do, I would love that so much. Also, please do give a positive rating for the show on Apple Podcasts, Google, Stitcher, whatever. I, I don't know how many actually allow you to do that, but Apple Podcasts for sure allows you to do a positive rating or a rating at all, whatever it is. If you could do write a positive rating, you like the show, five stars, and tell me what you like. It'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. I'll give you a shout out on air, and thank you so much if you could do that in advance. With that said, I've gone a little long, with, uh, but uh, that was a lot of fun, though, because Wayne brought a lot of interesting, interesting conversation to the show, as did Vince Germano, as did Tene Brown, Levi Brown, of course. That's awesome on Twitter. Thank you so much for bringing that, and keep, keep, keep them coming. I appreciate it very much. I apologize for not being more active on uh, Twitter this last week, uh, Levi. I apologize. Just so distracted and working late, and then coming back and replaying the games at home and the you know, parts of it in the evening and parts of it, uh, well, really late evening and uh, chunks of it in the morning as well to get caught up and seeing what I need to see. So with that said, I wish you a good, uh, good week and the Timberwolves to continue their winning ways.